Jazz. Number three. Stan Getz and Bill Evans got lost in a Moroccan bazaar back in 1960. They were forced to live on goat flesh until both grew horns and small beards. This may not seem likely on the face of it, nor is there any moral to be gleaned, except that things are known to happen sometimes that never happened before. Sonny Rollins, on the other hand, spent a good part of the sixties in the woodshed, forsaking stage and studio altogether, because someone happened to say there were only thirty-two viable notes on the saxophone, and Sonny was perfectly sure there were thirty-five, although two were elusive, and the third required perfect serenity, but tended to play itself without necessity for fingering, if pursued with a whole heart, mind, and soul. This he did, and one may suppose discovered the note, but if so, he never played it in public, because stepping outside those thirty-two viable notes, something tended to emerge which was not exactly jazz, and therefore not really his bag. There was this dedicated trumpeter named Rudy, who used to hang with the same crowd I did in the early sixties. He would not adhere to the changes of any impromptu band that gathered, but commenced to blow just as the spirit moved him, taking twenty-four bars for a sixteen-bar solo and causing controversy amongst those who felt tight structure was prerequisite for proper taking of liberties. Let's just say he had his own internal clock, and intonation was not his strong point. Anyway, Rudy sidled up to Miles between sets of the Black Hawk, blowing cold spit out of his valves, and said, Man, you want to do something together? And Miles said, What do you want to do, baby? Fuck? I think this may have been what broke the man, because he disappeared to the East Coast, and was last seen by Marty's brother Bobby, round 69 in Central Park, way late at night, carrying a broken fishing pole. This was all we heard, and could mean a number of things. I mean, I don't expect he's still there, although the last you hear of somebody is where they live forever in your mind, and that's a sadness we accumulate, which has nothing to do with jazz, per se.